and we are here with Marta Edith Hernandez, who's joined us, and is going to give us a little bit, bit of her time to interview her about some of the stuff that she's doing these days. So Marta, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Alex. And uh, I know we've had some conversations previously around some of the interesting and ambitious goals that you have coming up. But uh, So let's start, start a little bit about the most recent or the goal that you have in terms of your educational goal. If you could tell us a little bit about that. Definitely. So the most recent thing that I've decided for my educational goal was to pursue my PhD in organizational behavior. And I actually, believe it or not, just found out this even existed. I was on the MBA track for a little while and then realized that that's not really what I wanted to do. And I've recently come across a few mentors who, who have their doctorates and it really seems like that's the path that I want to go for. And I'm really considering applying to Stanford and UC Berkeley because of the faculty, because of how strong they are in the research with the Latino community. And what I really want to do with the PhD is really dig deep and dive into what is happening with corporate America as we as we as Latinos, Latino leaders, keep moving up the ranks, right? There's what I call the double pane glass ceiling that I think we can turn into a double pane glass window. There's no reason for it to be a ceiling. We can just open the window and walk right in and take charge of what's happening. But there are a lot of cultural traits that we carry as Latinos and Latinas particularly that inhibit us from moving forward in the corporate world even if, even as entrepreneurs because we have to deal with the big corporations to get the, the big bucks. So I want to really take that and figure out what are the things that we need to change as a culture in order to make sure that we continue to be successful and, and those of us, those who are already up in the higher ranks how can they bring the rest of society up with them so that we don't, we don't just have a mass of Latinos in the U.S. who are in the service industry? Let's talk a little bit about one of your other ventures that you have that's very exciting as well, with the, specifically with the Latino consumer market. Yes, so um, I am a co-founder of gigofertas.com and this is a social venture that is not a nonprofit but it is very near and dear to my heart because it helps, it creates a, an impact in the Latino community with the economic force that we truly need in, in this dire stage of, uh, of the country situation economically. So we've, what we've created is an SMS text platform and a mobile app that run in parallel for Latinos at the bottom tier that are at the, at the economic bottom tier that can have access to discounts from all of their favorite retailers. Target, Old Navy, Safeway, you name it. They shop till they drop, but they don't have the same access that a lot of people like you and I have. You know, a lot of them are getting the smartphones, but a lot of them are still on SMS-based text messaging. What are a lot of the things that are inhibiting them from using, from going online? You know, we think, well, just get them a computer, they'll go online. That's not the solution. A lot of them are afraid to use the banks. A lot of them don't, aren't here legally. They can't use the, a lot of them don't even know they can open up bank accounts. Or they, want, they don't want to be able to be tracked. My mom, my parents are here legally, and they have bank accounts, but you're never going to see my mom using an ATM. She wants to have the cash and run with the cash, and, and everything's based on cash and checks. That's how they work, because they think, they feel safer that way. So how do we, as a company, modify our platform in order for them to be able to use that and run with it? Instead of trying to force them to come to us, we go to them. So we've modified our entire business plan to be able to go to them, give them all the discounts that they're not currently able to get right now because they're not online, give them to them in Spanish, they're culturally relevant, and they get to pay directly through their mobile carrier. Because we know they have the phone, right? They're getting text messages. We know where they're paying that because then they wouldn't be able to continue speaking. So we, we've created this nice little bundle where brands and merchants are gonna have direct access to this very beautiful consumer space that nobody's been able to tap into properly yet. And not only that, but once they get into the text platform, they'll be able to transition with one click onto the mobile app. So we never lose the consumer. 
Outstanding. I love that. I mean, what you and I have had several conversations around the opportunities that there are within our segment, and this is beautifully orchestrated and you know uh, thought of. I love the concept, and I wish you Thank the you. best of luck with it. Thank you. Where can people find? Uh, maybe go to your website. Or is there somewhere we, they could be pointed to right now? Yes, go to our corporate website. It is giggo.net, G I G G O dot net, and there you'll be able to find all of the partnership opportunities and contact me, contact all the rest of my team, and we're ready to go. We're going to be launching very soon. We've already partnered up with Verizon and several other organizations that are nearby that are microfinance lending organizations that have direct access to this, this user group that desperately needs our help. And uh, we're, we're ready to roll. We're ready to roll.